Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to part one of a three-part video we prepared entitled Arloa's Hydroponic Tower Garden. And here it is, Arloa's Hydroponic Tower Garden. Part one of this video series, we're going to talk about how we got around to building this and talk about its primary components and how it worked out for us, some problems we had, some things we learned. In part two, we have how to construct and assemble the tower garden. And in part three, we have a video on the fabrication of the grow pockets in the tubes. So let's get started on this part one. Arloa is my wife, and she has been an avid gardener for all of her adult life. Our yard is full of flowers from early spring to late fall. Our garden has vegetables throughout the summer season. And we're, I'm just very fortunate to have her put together a garden and a yard that's beautiful to have and to live in. About uh, two years ago, in 2015, she started reading a lot more about aquaponics and hydroponics. And in early 2016 said she'd like to find some way to build something that would allow her to explore more fully those kinds of gardening. So we did what I think perhaps you are doing, and that is we went online and looked at options of what people had already built. We went to hydroponics stores and we talked to people there and looked at their displays. We went to home and garden shows to see what might be on display um, in commercially produced product or anything else. And then we brought those ideas together and thought about what we wanted to try and accomplish. What we ended up with was a tower garden that we could put on our deck, enjoy it from our kitchen windows and our, our uh, dining room windows, keep the deer and the rabbits at bay, and be able to enjoy watching what's growing right outside of our windows. We have built a five tube tower and the tubes we used are drain water uh, tubes or also called schedule 30 PVC. There are other components within the tower that are schedule 40, that's the heavier duty PVC. Our tub um, comes from Home Depot. It's actually a pre-molded uh, fish pond we had a couple of these already in hand because we have fish ponds and we use them as the holding tanks when we're for fish when we're cleaning out our ponds. This lid is a sheet product. It's a half inch PVC that's available in a four by eight sheet from Home Depot also. And then way down in the bottom, we have a pump that moves the water up through the feed tube right here into this distributor. The water then trickles down, comes through the tubes, feeds the plants, goes into the collection tub, and starts all over again. We built our tower in the spring of last year, and we started it running on March 22nd. By early July, we were having problems, and we realized we had to fix them. So we shut it all down, we moved the plants into the shallows of our fish ponds, and we took some things apart. We had three problems. One problem was, the inexpensive pump we bought really wasn't strong enough to push the water up as high as it needed to go, as strongly as it needed to get there, to feed down through the tubes. The second problem we had is we had purchased a commercially made distributor for the water, and it was too small. It clogged up too easily, and it just reduced the, what had been a flow to a trickle, and we didn't get enough water into the plants. The third problem we had was a lot of water leaking out around the pots, the net pots that the plants were in. So we attacked all three problems. We ordered a bigger pump, which is a wonderful pump, and the details are available to you online. Um, all you have to do is email us at Arloa's Tower Garden at yahoo.com. We'll send you the materials list and the instructions for construction and for assembly, and you can find out about the pump. We have a, a great pump, and it does a wonderful job. I took off the commercial little guy that I had for distributor and I custom built a distributor up at the top. The instructions for how to do that are also in the construction information. And then we took out all of the little net pots like these with the plants in them and we took a second net pot and we glued it into the tower and caulked around so that water couldn't leak out and cut the bottom out of that net pot. Then we set this net pot in and 
the leakage problems are solved. There are some kinds of hydroponic systems where they're not worried about leakage. The water leaks out, it drops down into a big tub, and it goes back up again. In this case, when water leaks out, it hits the lid, it runs off, you lose water, you have a mess around your, your patio or your deck. It's just not a good thing to have. So we have solved those problems and everything works very well. We've had a great time with this tower garden. Um, so much fun with it that um, I, the, the fall, my daughter who uh, lives in Charlotte, North Carolina with her husband asked for one for her house. So for her Christmas present, we built one and we took it down in February. It was a late delivery from Santa and we put it out on her patio. Um, we turned it on on March 1st. Three weeks later, they were picking lettuce off of it to have in their salads for dinner. Um, by the end of April, when we stopped back to see them again, the three tomato plants at the bottom were in blossom. We also had a salad with our dinner for four of us taken off the tower, and they had had several side salads for their dinners taken off over the weeks. Um, so it's been very productive for them, as ours has been very productive for us. I put casters underneath of the dolly because we thought we might want to move it around on our deck some, and we have done that. The very first thing we thought we'd like to do is, to be fair to all the plants, once a week rotate the tower 180 degrees. That means one week one side gets more sun and the other side doesn't, and then it switches around. Well, egalitarianism is good for a lot of things, but not necessarily for plants because we found pretty quickly that plants like tomatoes and Swiss chard and cucumbers and peppers love a lot of sun, whereas more delicate plants like lettuce of various varieties can do well with sun and light, but they don't need intense direct sun all the time, or they'll simply wilt by the end of the day and then they'll have to recover overnight. So we finally found a spot here on our deck that works for us. On really bright days, we just open the umbrella on our umbrella table over here and bring a little shade in the late afternoon over onto our tower. And that keeps anything that's pretty delicate from wilting. Um, and everything grows very nicely. I'm gonna take a shot up close over here and show you, here's a green pepper for, wait a minute, what is this? It's a red pepper, for instance. And so you can look in and not only can you hear the sound of the water trickling, but you can see the water trickling around the plants. And that water is bathing the roots of these plants. Um, if you start your plants in soil, you will have black and brown roots. Uh, when you put them in the tower garden, they take a couple of weeks to adjust. They grow white water roots. And once those get started, the plant goes very well. And so we have red peppers here. We have tomatoes, we have yellow peppers, we have green peppers. We have a nasturtium up here, partly for the fun of the flowers, but also you can eat nasturtiums, so um, we have them for that purpose. Around the back side of our tower, we have several different kinds of lettuce. Some we bought at the garden store this year, some of them we started from seed. Um, today is uh, May 27th, 2017. We started just a little later this year than last year, um, but we anticipate we'll have a very good harvest and a very good routine return from our tower garden this year, this growing season. What else have we learned? We've learned that a basil plant, a single basil plant up here by August will be this size and the roots will be three feet long down into the tub. We've learned that the tomato plants need to be in the bottom row. And then you need to find some ways, perhaps rope or string or some of the green Velcro strapping that's available for gardening to help hold them up a little bit, give them some support. Their roots are heavy, the tomatoes roots are heavy, thick white roots and they go way down in. Late in the summer you want to reach in and rip off some of those roots, otherwise they're going to get down into the pump and that's going to cause problems. Um, what else have we learned? Um, after a while, lettuce bolts, and so you have to take those plants, that is, that goes to blossom, and so you take those plants out and you start some new ones and put, in, put those in those pockets. And you can keep your tower garden going for a long time. We live in mid-Michigan, 
and we start ours, as I said, today, May 27th, and it will run through about mid-October before we start getting some serious frost that we have to be worried about. If you live in a more southern climate, you can start earlier, you can go later. You could get probably two or three crops out of each of the pockets in your tower. We have five towers, we have 30 plants over seven square feet. It's a very economical use of space to grow a garden, and we've enjoyed watching it throughout the, the uh, year last year. And now we're excited to see it up and running again and ready to use this year. Again, you can get the instructions by simply uh, emailing us at our lowest tower garden at yahoo.com. Uh, we hope you'll uh, let us know how your tower garden or whatever hydroponics you do work out for you. Thanks so much for watching our video and uh, happy gardening.